Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. What you are watching is the second in my EJS Express build, where we're basically, we're building a puppy power. We're building a site where you can like puppies. And basically where we last left off, we kind of set up all our code, we seeded our database with some puppies and all that stuff. Now we're gonna actually create our index page for puppies. So basically what I need here is I wanna categorize all the views related to puppies in its own folder. Why? Because that way I know that all the puppy views are in there. And if later I want to like add to this app and add like cats and birds, I can organize all these views. Okay. So I'm gonna make a new folder called puppy. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our index page for puppy. So I'm gonna create a new file called index.ejs. Okay, and I'm gonna use an exclamation point to use Emmet to kind of set up my HTML boilerplate. Nice. And again, the website's called Puppy Power. Puppy Power. Puppy Lovers Unite. Okay, and then right now, I just wanna make sure this works. So I'm gonna just start off with just an H1 hello world. Always be incremental. Like don't don't rush to do the whole thing in one step. So in this case, I just have a page with this says hello world. I'm gonna head over to my index controller because now all my routes are set up. So again, we already set up all the routes. So since all seven routes are all set up, and oh, I never exported the router. Oops. Okay, almost forgot. So we need to export the router module dot exports equals router. And since we exported that router, that was able to get imported into server.js and we were able to do the thing. So that's our router. Now what I'm gonna do is, so that technically right now this site kind of already works. So if I were to run the server, so let's do that. NPM run dev. That's localhost 3000. So I get hello world on the main page, but if I go to the puppy, I get index. If I go to the puppy slash new, oops, puppy slash new. Uh, I shouldn't be getting that there, so let me see why. Controllers. I should be getting new, unless my routes are messed up. New. Where's my slash new page? Huh, I must have accidentally overrode the new page. Oh, here it is. But I never wrote slash new, that's why. Okay, so there we go. So now if I type in slash new, I get new. And then let me just fix my show real quick. Oh, I never made the destroy route a delete. Okay, so there we go. Okay, and then again, this code will be on GitHub. So when I finish this video series, I will push this up to GitHub and then put the link in the video description. Okay, so see, always good to, to double check and try things out so you can make sure that everything works the way you expect it to. So edit should say edit. Oh, nope, edit says show. Why is that? Oh, because it's supposed to be puppy slash like five slash edit. There we go. Okay, cool. All the routes work. Well, see, right now they're just setting dummy text responses because we created dummy functions. So what we want to do, okay, um, is um, yeah, create our, our index controller. Again, I just woke up. Um, so what we're gonna do here is in our controller for our index route, because that's the index controller goes with our index route. What we want to do is this generates all the puppies. So I need to get all the puppies. So I want to make this an async function. Like I should have just done that for all of them from the get go. So I will just write async for all of them. Okay, async. Async, async, 
a sink. <coughs> goody, good, good. Okay. And then what I want to do, do is get all the puppies. So we'll say const puppies equals await puppy dot find. And then this will just find all the puppies. There you go. I got all the puppies. So I'm going to get <coughs> all the puppies. And then I want to render that template we made earlier, that uh, EJS file that we made in views. So index.ejs. So I'm going to change this from res.send. So I'm not sending just text. Now I'm sending, I'm going to send a template. I'm going to render a template. The first argument says which template to render. So in the views folder, I have a view in puppy slash index. So I'm going to write puppy slash index. And then I want to send down the puppies. So I'm going to send this object with a property called puppies, which equals all the puppies. OK, and there we go. So that's all this is doing. I'm going to render, render the view. And I'm passing this data down to the view, um, which is done in EJS. So now I'm going to go back to my index.ejs. Well, actually, first, let's just make sure that we're seeing the hello world now. So if I go to slash puppy, I should see hello world now. And I good. I see hello world. So that means it is reading this template. Good. So now let's edit the template. Now that we know that like our route's working, I can see the index page. It's rendering it. Let's move forward there. So again, before you start doing all the EJS, it's always best to just make sure that the actual view itself is rendering. Um, the idea is like to take small steps, so that way the possible errors when you do have an error are minimal because you've kind of tested each piece along the way. Um, simple steps. Simple steps. Okay, so body. Um, we'll just say puppies. I don't know, H1, puppies. And then what I want to do is kind of put all the puppies in a separate container. So I'll use a main tag, because the main tag is ba basically a div. And then what I really want to do is like put each puppy in its own container within the main. So like main's going to end up being like a container that uses like Flexbox. And then we're just going to like line up all the puppies. So first let's just create our loop. And we're going to say, um, so I'm going to do an EJS loop. So again, the way EJS works is that I can write JavaScript, but I have to write JavaScript within these like squid brackets. So here we go. Um, so for puppy uh, puppies, and the reason I have puppies is because when I did the res.render, I passed down the data as puppies. And I put the opening closing bracket. Okay, and then I'm going to just make sure that I bracket this off and then I want to finish bracketing that off oops put too many there we go so essentially now these two lines mark the beginning and end of the loop so anything I put between this is gonna just loop over and over again so in this case let's put a we want everything in a kind of its own div but what I like to do is instead of having to use like classes and stuff like that, I'll use like the semantic tags. And we have a whole bunch of them, like header, footer, main, article, aside. I haven't used article yet, so let me use article. So that way when I do the CSS later, I'm not having to like target a class, I can just target the article tag. Okay. So article, so each article is like a div of puppies or a div of one single puppy. And basically every puppy has two things. It has an image. Okay, it has a image, which um, every image has a source attribute. So we need to inject the, the, the text of the URL for that source attribute. So percentage equals puppy dot image, because it's one of the properties from our schema. puppy.image and then um, yep then uh, that's it that's the image tag cool and then below it we're gonna have like an h 
two with the like number, the number of likes that the puppy has. Um, so puppy dot likes. And then we're gonna have a button that says like the puppy. And then that button doesn't do anything yet. Okay, we'll come back and address the clicking of the button. Okay, and that should do it. So now if I refresh the page, what's gonna happen is that the template should be getting the puppies and it's gonna create one of these article tags for each of the puppies. There you go. See, like, but these puppies are huge. So I don't want, I don't usually like doing most of my styling till the end, but let's make this a little bit more like, like look better. Okay. So in that case, let's um, create a new file style.css. And let me go link at the style.css. So let me go to the EJS file and link because again our, our public folder is being statically served because again that's all configured in the boilerplate so i'll just type in link choose link css and that's already kind of referring to a style.css i'm just gonna put the slash in front of it so that's referring to the the url slash style.css okay and that's set so let's do a few things Um, first, let's just style that h1. So that h1, we want text align center. And I want the font family to be, we'll just choose some random font family. Arial. We want the color of the font to be red. Okay. I can probably start seeing some changes already. So if I just scroll up, let's just make sure that those changes took effect. There we go. Puppies. Cool. Now again, I wanted the main tag to be the container of the of the of all the puppies. So let's change that. Let's make the puppies the main container take up 80% width. So width 80%. But here's the thing: if you do that, the container doesn't magically center itself. So to center it, I have to use margin. So let's say 10 picks of margin up and down. So that means there's like a little 10 pixel buffer on the top and bottom of the main element, which is the container that's going to have all the puppies inside of it but then auto for left and right that's going to center it okay then we're going to make this a flex box so um so display flex i want it to wrap so flex wrap wrap so that way it wraps if there's, if there's more puppies it just keeps wrapping to the next row and that's going to be good so far. Let's refresh. Now the puppies are still on top of each other because the images are so big. So right now it still looks a little bit like a hot mess. So let's modify the, the puppy cards. So again, those the puppies are inside of the aside. So let me just style the asides real quick first. I want the asides to be about with 300 pixels each. The reason being is that that's about the size of like the smallest mobile phone. So this way I don't have to like do much in the way of responsive modeling because the wrapping will just magically just kind of, I'll show you in a second. With 300 pixels, um, let's put a little bit of margin between them. Margin five pixels. So that way they're not like scrunched up next to each other. And let's see how that does so far. The, pop, the, the images are still too big. So I need to actually target the images specifically. So aside, IMG. So this targets any image inside of an aside. So I wanna make sure the image is no bigger than width 200 pixels. So that way it fits within the, the aside. So if I do that, that should definitely make the pictures smaller, but it did not. Let me think as to why aside image. Let's go to my EJS. Oh, because I didn't use a side, I used article. That's why. Article. Okay, so any image inside of an article will be with 200. So now when I refresh this, there we go. 
So you were trying to see like what I'm talking about. Although these are all kind of scrunched up together. I don't want that. Okay, I want there to be more margin between us. So this article is what this needs to change to article. And that should fix that. Yeah, see that looks a little bit better. Okay, now if I do control shift I just to kind of show a few things. And see like because of the wrap, see when I go to mobile, it'll automatically just magically like they stack on top of each other because they wrap based on the width. And since none of the divs are longer than 300, because again, a Galaxy, let's see here, like a pick, an iPhone 5 is generally the smallest. And see, that's 320 width, so it's still going to fit comfortably in there. So you end up with mobile responsiveness without much work. That's why I love Flexbox. This is still not quite centered, so let's see why. Ah, uh, okay, so it's not that the boxes aren't centered. Oh, oh I see why, okay. So see, like the the main div is centered, but the content inside of it isn't. So we still have like, a few more things to kind of clean up. So a few things about the article. I want the text in here to be text align center. So that way, like the puppy image and all that stuff sign like is centered. I want um, this main tag to take anything inside of it and make it kind of centered. So that's going to be um, justify content. And we're going to make that space between so that we kind of spaces them out nicely. And if I do that, and see now we're not starting to look a little bit better. More work could be done, but that's the point. I mean, that's we're not going to go through all of that right now. Because um, styling can take hours in itself. Um, cool. The only thing else I want to do is just maybe add a little bit of a curvature to those puppy pictures. So I'm going to use border radius. And add like 10 pixels of border radius just so that way those pictures have like little rounded corners and there we go that makes me just look a little bit more attractive okay and let's see here I probably going to want to align all this stuff with the bottom of the card so that way all these likes line up so let me just do that so that's gonna be align items and I wanted to do flex end so that way it lines up with the bottom. There we go. See there, that looks a bit better. Okay. So there we go. And their heights are kind of their heights are kind of odd. So I'm, I'm not gonna mess with the pictures, but I do want to make sure that the container is kind of the same height every time. So what I'm going to do, since the pictures I know are only 200 ish in size like okay I'm gonna go here uh, let's make sure that the article height is or we'll say uh, yeah height is about five four hundred pixels let's start with that so that was just like a consistent height there we go and something a little funky there Let's take a look. Let's examine. That's all good, but it's still not lining up with the flex end as it should. So let's go back to. Oh, I want. Yes, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, I see why, because it's inside the thing. Um, I won't worry about vertical alignment right now. Um, cause I didn't have to turn this into a flex box. I could probably do that really quick. Flex display. So I'm turning each card into a flex box. So each individual puppy is going to be a flex box too. So display flex, but I still want it to be a column. So I'm going to say flex direction is column. And I'm going to say justify content flex end. So that way it just it it, it uh, aligns with the bottom of the box. Okay, that kind of works. Not perfect, but uh, oh, I should probably still do the align items. So align items center. So that way, because since it's now column, since I put it in column mode, 
then technically like this is going to be justify content and then this is going to be align items so essentially this is a flex box uh, not that uh, this that's a flex box and then each of these individual puppies is a flex box there we go love flex box makes positioning so much easier and there you go okay so you see you got all the puppies they're fairly attractively aligned okay without doing too much like coloring and stuff like that so you get the the idea of the website so we have our index page all set to go we are rendering our puppies okay right now our like button doesn't work we'll come back to that later but they exist okay and yeah that um that's it. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video and we'll do show.